Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Duffy Robbins, who just brought us a message from Luke 19 and the story of Zacchaeus. Correct. And I love how you talked about you have a Old Testament Bible hero, hero and yeah. a New Testament. Um, and so today we talked about Zacchaeus um, and just what we can learn from his interaction with Jesus. And I know most of the time we think about outreach um, as something large scale that we have to do, like mm -hmm. Billy Graham or going to a third world country. Um, but you really brought some simple, practical ways that we can do outreach. Yeah. Can you yeah. talk about this? Well, that, that, you know, that's one of the things that's remarkable about Jesus's ministry is how, um, how, how natural it was. It was an outgrowth of who he was. And, uh, and, and you see this in a number of situations where his most significant conversations were prompted out of everyday experiences. You know, the most obvious uh, example is the woman at the well, you know, and, and uh, um, but, but he did, he did have this habit. I mean, literally there, there was, uh, there's one kind of scholarly article in a, in a kind of a Bible journal that talked about uh, Jesus, uh, you know, dining his way through the Gospels or eating his way through the Gospels, because he does. He 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 realizes. Well, in that in that culture, dining was a big deal. Mm -hmm. You got to realize. I mean, we have to realize there. Of course, there's no electricity. Mm -hmm. So when you have a meal at night, um, you know, the as the light dies in the outside, you know, you're left now with candles. And I think it probably prompted great conversation. Um, you know, and so Jesus made use of that. And, and, and you're right, I think, you know, as a Christian, I, I, when I think about evangelism, I go, oh, I have to share the four laws. And, but, but evangelism could be, you know, a four course dinner. I mean, it could be four food groups. It could just be saying, uh, you know, like I have some guys that I meet with um, every, I have two different groups that I meet with every other week. College guys, and, and in that case, it's not evangelism, but it's just breakfast. And, and there's something about the communication that can happen there that can't happen when, in, in a lot of other contexts. And, uh, and so I think um, you know, that's one of the unique parts about Jesus' ministry is a lot of it happened on the road. We tend to think of ministry as something that happens on a Sunday. Uh, for Jesus, it was you know, Monday through Saturday and the everyday conversations that happened around meals or, or just, uh, you know, doing stuff together. Talking to you, take with uh, uh, your friend to a movie and then talk about maybe some of the themes in the movie. So it doesn't have to be, like you said, a Billy Graham crusade or some grandiose or or step-by-step or -step process that we walk somebody through. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, the Roman road, the four spiritual laws, that's great. Those are great, but but it's not the only way to, to bring someone, invite someone to come to know Jesus. Right, and I think what you said is so important is that um, there's such a relational component to it. And I think oftentimes um, we as believers are scared or afraid to enter into those kind of relationships maybe with a non-believer or the way we see Jesus dining with sinners is because we feel, does that affirm their sin? Does that say yeah. that I'm affirming whatever the lifestyle is or how far they are from God or things like yeah. that. So how, how do you see Jesus balance? Is it really, that? that's a, in that way? it's an awkward and difficult question because, because, uh, um, yeah, we, we, we feel complicit somehow, or at least that it's a tacit approval of, of, of the sin they're involved in. Um, what you see in Jesus was this tension that, um, that he was able to maintain and, and, and model, where, for example, with the woman, at the, you know, who was caught in the act of adultery, mm -hmm. you know, he was saying, look, I'm not going to condemn you, but he said, you know, don't sin anymore. Mm -hmm. But that was at the tail end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, it was after he had offered her something to drink, and, and, uh, and it was after they had, had had that time there where he could kind of... Uh, 
uh, where he could, you know, talk with her about what's gone, what's, what, where are these other people gone, and are they, have they, have, where, do they condemn you, and I don't condemn you. It, he was he was willing to to actually uh, call sin sin. And if you, if you look to the scripture, uh, contrary to a lot of the kind of cultural noise, uh, Jesus was actually pretty pretty uh, willing to call people out, but. More often than not, when he called people out, it was people who thought they were righteous. It was the self-righteous people. Um, but he was, he, was, he was actually pretty clear on some of those issues. But I think in the case of Zacchaeus, um, he realized this is a guy who is not, uh, you, know, he's not a, you know, he's not a follower of, of God's word. He's not a follower of Torah. He's not following the law. And in a sense, he, although he's not doing what God calls him to do, He's doing what I might expect a sinner to do. Mm -hmm. And you can't say, well, I'm not going to share the gospel with somebody until they become a Christian. <laughs> you, you know, we have, to, we have to embrace them where they are. And that's the nature of incarnation. God came and met us, you know, like Paul says in Romans, while we were yet sinners. Mm -hmm. God showed his love for us. It's hard. It's really, really hard. I mean, when I say it's hard, I don't mean just generically. I mean for me. I've been in situations where I've struggled with precisely that question. Like, how can I, how can I have a, the next conversation with this person without somewhere in that conversation talking about this? To me, it's like a big, huge elephant mm -hmm. in the room. Okay. And, and, and maybe, you know, that will have to happen. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I also think that, that Jesus was this master at saying, you know what, Zacchaeus doesn't have to stop doing what he's doing to for me to want to love him, for me to care about him. He doesn't have to stop and clean up his house before I go to it. Uh, I'm going to go to his house and then we'll clean it up together. If, if the gospel is good news at all, it basically says that we can come to him with, we can invite him into our dirty house mm -hmm. and say, you want to eat at this place? You want to have dinner here? That's amazing. That's grace. I know it's unsanitary. But if you're willing to come, come. And then let Jesus help you clean out the house. That's so good. Um, and so you're back again next week with us. Next week, yes. Yeah. Part two of the song and dance. Or give us uh, a preview there, I of promise what I will never, ever <laughs> sing again in a, a service. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. That would. Yeah. So, but next week, uh, I promise no singing. But, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of, you know, I stopped right at the pivotal point. Zacchaeus mm -hmm. is on the tree. Jesus is hanging. on the street. Left us Left hanging. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as you know, um, there is a scene change in that narrative, and uh, next we go to Zacchaeus's uh, house, and and we're gonna talk about like, well, well, what does it mean? How, how does one actually become a Christian? How does one become a follower of Christ? And, uh, and there's, it, it's so rich, it's such a rich text that I didn't wanna rush it. Um, and so we'll talk about that, uh, we'll talk about that next week. And, uh, and maybe talk a little bit too about uh, the idea of, of uh, how, can, how can Jesus love us even though we are tax collectors and sinners, how can he meet us and love us and look beyond these things that, that most people uh, weren't willing to do, as, nor are we willing to do, and how do, we, how do we get beyond that? And so we'll talk about that some. Uh, next week as well. Great. Looking forward to having you back again next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.